Hi everyone, um, my name is Autumn McCarr and I'll be telling you a little bit about Carol T today as my 1900s photographer. Um, to begin with, Carol Teague was born in 1900 and he died in 1951. Uh, died from heart attack and it was actually interesting because the um, heart attack wasn't just a normal health induced thing. Uh, theories at least think that it was from, um, it was induced by communist enforcers because as you can see he lives in Czechoslovakia and at this time when he was older um, communism Soviet Union all that drama was going on World War II you know and he um, spoke out against the communists a lot so it is thought that enforcers were um, being aggressive towards him which is what led his heart attack but he uh, is a big part of the modernist avant-garde movement um, and he had he didn't just keep his talents in that field though he moved them out to tons of other ones he was a theorist for first the fine arts and also architecture even though he never became an architect himself um he was a columnist for different magazines and an editor and critic for different kinds of art in general he organized events as well in the um art scene in Czechoslovakia in the 1920s and uh, it should also be noted a lot of things i read said that he was a really energetic enthusiastic person um, some of his important things he did was he brought the modern art movement to Prague um, and the Davidsil movement, uh, which we read a lot about in our textbook. Um, he was one of the founders of it, and he was the graphic designer and editor of his monthly magazine. These two titles, Minimum Dwelling and Modern Architecture in Czechoslovakia, are both books on architecture that he wrote. Um, and these following two, the seven scientific writings and five studies, were all had interesting titles that I would have loved to share with you, except that I could not read them because they were not in English. So this is an excerpt from Kenneth Frampton's book titled Carol Teague 1900-1951, and I think it says better than I could have worded um, a nice evaluation of Teague's work and as well as how he um, went about creating all of the beautiful images. Teague was at one and the same time both an agent, provocateur, and seismograph, at once provoking action and debate, and yet simultaneously reacting with the utmost sensitivity to the shifting political spectrum of his time. Here's a few of his works. Um, we have a lot of interesting things, you know, woman, and he loves a woman body, obviously, most of them are nude. Um, some sort of collage incorporating images together. Uh, we have a couple of them um, that are just being nude without the face. And we have a couple that have um, a face, the middle bottom one, putting a face on a body, which I thought was interesting because a lot of the time, uh, a lot of his photos are putting more breasts and body parts in the place of faces. But it's interesting he chose to put a face where the breasts usually would be. Um, but to compare him to another artist from the time is Ansel Adams. Um, you can see some of their general differences. Um, the Vitzel, the Davidsel group uh, with Carol Teague's baby, you know, he works in the magazine, he's a big figure in it. S64 um, was founded by, among others, Ansel Adams, so they both had ties in those groups. Ansel was American, Carol was Slovakian, um, and Ansel's photos were with the environmentalist movement, which he created a really large impact on. Um, and Teague, as we know, is the avant-garde movement in Prague. Uh, Ansel did landscape photos, Teague did collage type, and An uh, Ansel Adams' work became famous while he was still alive to enjoy the fame, but Teague's work did not become well known until well after he had died. Um, another thing about Adams is he also created the zone system, um, which was basically a way to make sure you had the right amount of exposure and contrast. Um, whenever you had your final image, and that was uh, a really big impact on the photographic community. He also used large format cameras because um, he wanted them to have the highest resolution possible. So here's the first of three photo analysis I'm going to do. This one is um, some cutlery in front of a landscape background. Um, we have the collage style here with a woman's lips, eyes, and face. 
incorporated in it. Uh, the lips, interestingly enough, are penetrated by the fork. And the butter knife, or whatever it is, if you look at the top of it, it does not look like a normal knife. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be, but probably some other part of the woman's body. Um, and as we read about in Barrett, we, the evaluation interpretation really differ with each person. Um, I interpreted this as being related to the objectification of women and with the evaluation issue I'm going at being the social issues. Um, Cause there are, there are a lot of different issues that you can evaluate from. Like we read on Barrett, that's the one for this photo. Um, but it, I mean, they're using, they're using eating utensils, the pieces of a woman's body is showing how consumption is related to a person, but the person is being seen as a thing and it has a lot of strong social messages. Um, this one is very different. We have a building, it's very open, got a lot of windows, nice place to live, um, has a really intentional use of lines, which guides your eyesight in. And um, this is less meaningful and more about just appreciating the picture as it is. Uh, whereas last one had a social issue theme, this one is more aesthetic, and um, it's definitely an aesthetically pleasing picture with um your appreciation from it coming from the visual image itself rather than its meaning this one is kind of like the first one but it has a little bit of weird stuff going on it's really busy really detailed you don't really know where to look when you first look at it um kind of different from a lot of his other works which tend to mainly be like the first one i showed you um but this one is a collage well but it has hands and jewelry uh, a body, an eye on the body, and shoes, and keys, and like a building in the background. Um, some of it you can't even tell there is, there's so much stuff in there. And I think that putting all of these together, he was showing how you can jumble together all the, this is a nice term, finer things in life. Um, but especially note that these are all like pretty objects, and then in the pretty objects, we have a woman's body. Um, which, you know, it, it, the woman's body is beautiful. It's like jewelry. It's like shoes. It's it's art. Um, but he's putting it on that level, uh, which is very intentional and both aesthetically pleasing along with the social message it brings through. Um, and it, it has a combination, I guess, of ethnic and aesthetic issues um, whenever you're looking at it. And it's important to remember, though, with this one especially, uh, there's varying interpretations from different perspectives. So how you and me may interpret this photo could be vastly different. So this is my sort of conclusion on Teague. Um, he, his collages transcended reality through combinations of landscape, nature, and, of course, the human body. His photography was different than anyone else at the time, and he really brought especially to Czechoslovakia and other European countries. He really brought the movement to the full tide of it. Um, and as time goes on, his work is being appreciated more and more. Thanks for listening.